Many serious game streamers use a second PC actually, so they got one for gaming and then another one dedicated to encoding and interacting with their audience. So we were brainstorming and talking about some cool projects that we've done in the past with Unraid and virtualization technology and, well, let's just say the old light bulb went off. What if we could build, using an Intel high core count Core i9 processor, a two-in-one solution, splitting a single tower with a single motherboard effectively in half to perform both of those duties? Uh, virtually, of course. Would we end up with a viable day-to-day -day streaming solution? Well, thanks to Intel's sponsorship of this investigation, we are about to find out. Okay, so let's start with this. Why would anyone want to run a virtualized two-in-one setup as opposed to just having two separate machines? I mean, bare metal's more efficient, right? Let's take a look at a few reasons why it might actually be a cool idea. First, and most importantly for many, is cost. Unless you already have a second computer to dedicate to encoding, you would still have to buy a GPU, RAM, and storage for two, but you could save the considerable expense of many other components. In addition, your total power consumption and heat output will be a touch lower than running separate PCs, meaning your energy bill will be lower too. The second reason to go virtual is space. While it's not a concern for some, if you're streaming from a college dorm or a small apartment, this means one less tower taking up space in your gaming area. Not every virtualized two-in-one has to be this big. Reason number three, versatility. Since the gaming and streaming setups are virtualized, not only are any potential software issues confined to each VM, but they can also be much more quickly and easily backed up or cloned once you're set up, so in the future you can easily hit the reset button in case anything should go wrong. Also, thanks to the magic of Unraid, your gaming slash streaming machine can act as a file and media server for the rest of your household. So, the plan then is to use a portion of our CPU to encode our video stream using X264 with high quality settings. That way we can avoid the potential for scheduler conflicts without manually assigning CPU affinities in Task Manager like we would if we were doing both tasks on one OS. Well, okay, Linus, this all sounds great, but there's gotta be disadvantages, right? Well, there is the fact that when using virtualization, some devices can't be easily allocated to a VM. Our onboard audio, for example, shares an IOMMU group with the chipset and essentially cannot be used. Same story with USB ports. Each grouping of ports has to be on a dedicated controller in order to pass it through so that you can hot plug your devices, something that we pretty much take for granted these days. And finally, while it's possible to run Unraid without its own video card, it's a royal pain. So we grabbed a dedicated sound card for our gaming VM, an extra USB controller, we're using one of the onboard ones for the other VM, and an El Cheapo third graphics card for Unraid. So we are ready to, oh wait. So during our testing, we found that gaming performance was actually best when we assigned four cores and eight threads to our gaming VM. And in some configurations, we actually found tests that performed better in a virtualized environment compared to an equivalent configuration running on bare metal. What? So this is the kind of thing that we encounter sometimes when we're running on the bleeding edge. Uh, we spoke with Unraid's developers about the issue and they're putting together some information to share with the Red Hat and KVM hypervisor folks so that Hopefully we'll see a resolution by the time games demand more cores for optimal performance. But for the time being, our classic four core, eight thread setup manages a negligible performance hit compared to bare metal. And our streaming VM can suck up those extra cores anyway, so that it could be used for heavier video editing and faster encoding for those edited videos that can later be uploaded to YouTube or other video on demand sites. All right then, so let's show off the rest of the setup. 
we're using the utterly unique Level 1 Text DisplayPort 1.2 KVM from Wendell and his team. This gives us support for high refresh rate monitors like ASUS's 240Hz ROG Swift PG258Q and easy switching between our VMs, saving us from using two keyboards and mice. Though it should be noted that having an extra one on hand is pretty useful in some cases. We're using Corsair's massive Obsidian 900D tower thanks to its ample cooling capacity, and we're powering all three of our GPUs, the 1080 Ti for gaming, the 1050 Ti for streaming, and that basic one for Unraid off of an AX1200i power supply, and we've thrown in a monstrous Unraid array of seven 12 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf Pro drives for 60 terabytes of protected storage that's visible to both VMs, not to mention, as I said before, anyone else on the network who needs it, allowing us to record our streams basically indefinitely so we can make them epic frag vids after we're done streaming. Finally, for our capture card, oh, another surprise, no capture card. So we actually originally had planned to use one, that 4K one from Elgato, but this ended up being way cooler. So our gaming VM is actually transmitting its video and audio feed to the encoder VM using the low impact OBS NDI plugin, which runs with very little quality loss over our virtualized 10 gigabit network connection between our VMs. Then from there, we've set the streaming machine's output settings to Twitch's ultimate 1080p 60 FPS quality setting. And would you look at that? After a few command line tweaks, we could not only encode on the fly, but do so at X264's slow preset, which is six notches up from the default potato quality ultra fast. And to validate our original hypothesis, is there some benefit from separating them in VMs, we pushed our 11 hyper-threaded cores to their limit in the streaming VM to the point where we forced our encoded video to start dropping frames. Then we went back to the gaming VM to see if those resources were effectively being isolated and it was still running games like nobody's business. So what have we learned then on this journey? Well, for one, a virtualized dual head system with all of its shortcomings has some advantages. Operating our two virtual machines was about as transparent as running two completely independent systems, whether via KVM switch or with two full sets of peripherals. This is a use case for many core systems that we've been excited about for years now, and one that has many applications beyond game streaming that is just gonna get better in time. And second, is that with superior codecs such as X265 on the horizon that are better optimized not only for image quality, but for better thread and memory utilization that happens to mesh great with Core i9's new cache design, you'll be able to push the quality even higher with a setup like this. All we need to do then is wait for Twitch and mainstream broadcasting software to support it. In the meantime though, we've still built one of the coolest X264 streaming setups out there. So thanks to everyone for their help with this and especially Intel for sponsoring this sick experiment and also you guys for watching it. So if you guys dislike this video, you can hit that button, but if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description, maybe a shiny new Core i9. Also linked down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.